What's up, my crazy people in there? This is your boy, Awesome Joe 18, aka Giovanni Warta, and welcome to the first episode of the Pokemon After Game. Now, this first episode is gonna be kind of strange, and you're gonna see in a little bit why. And the reason is because I'm doing a post recording. Now, for those people that are not new, that are new to 2020, I don't even think post recordings even exist anymore. Uh, that, that I know of. It's all about live commentary and etc, etc. But the reason why they call it post recording is because they record the footage, edit it a little bit to, or not edit, and then they do a voiceover. That's all it really is, what I'm doing right now. That's why the game is running through. So the reason why I did a post recording is because the audio was trash. Honestly, it sounded so static, you could actually hear the ventilation of my laptop. Now, that is normal for it to catch on normal audio, but this was so bad that there was no way to fix it. Like, my audio was trash, and I just didn't love the way it came out. So therefore, I just decided to say, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do a voiceover. Now, hopefully, knock on wood, the way that I recorded this it's actually capturing the audio in the background so I could make it easier to sync up and make it easier to upload this episode. Now, when I recorded this, I think I recorded it four days ago. And the reason it's taking a little bit longer is because I did not have any of my recording equipment with me when I was on my vacation trip. That is why this episode is going to be a little bit long. Well, not long, but like it's kind of old that I recorded the footage. And it was recorded back when Snorlax, Eevee... And I forgot what other ones were still in the game as not to be rare. But now those Pokemon are unfortunately rare. So if you guys are out there and play playing Pokemon Sword or Shield and have any spare Gigantamax, Snorlax, and I think Kr Kreshna. And if you guys are so nice, send me your friend codes and trade with me. Please, from the guy that's your heart. I mean, that, hey, I mean that... It doesn't hurt to try, right? It does not hurt to try. But yeah, so on the screen, you're, what you're gonna be seeing is basically Pokemon that I'm capturing left and right. And I think the ones that you guys have seen so far is me capturing Sock. And right now, Gyarados? Don't quote me on that. I think it was Gyarados. Holy crap. Wait, give me a sec. Oh no! Wait, I think it was. So I got Sock, Gyarados, and now Mercatus. So that, that, that's so far. The point that I'm doing for the after game is making sure I catch every Pokemon in the game before Pokemon Crown, or I forgot, po the DLCs come out from the other regions that you could go ahead and catch the legendaries. But before I go and touch that area, let me just go bring you guys right back in to post recording. So yeah. So the reason I'm doing post recording one more time is because I was away from home. I didn't have any equipment and that that just happened. So let's go on to the brand new stuff in Pokemon Direct 2020. And so I'm done about post recording. So let's go on to Pokemon Direct 2020 because I'm getting open to the scene of right here where we get the glimpse of Galarian Slowpoke. Which literally looks like curry, which I think I called it curry when I caught it. So if you see on your screen right now, that is my boy, Slowpoke. And yeah, so before, uh, I see, I suck at this. And I'm going to keep it in because this is legit me. This is me trying to post record for the first time. And I feel like it's pretty cool to keep it in. But yeah, this is Galarian Slowpoke. And one of the DLCs is called the Isle of Armor. And I think the other one is the Isle of Shield. I don't, I don't remember. I can't remember. But all I remember, it's a it's a yellow island and a blue island. Or I think it's an ice island. But whatever it is. That, that, I want to complete the Pokedex before that time comes. So I could throw that content for you guys. So that's what the after game is going to be composed of. If after this series. After the Shadok. This after game portion is all about me catching Pokemon. Finishing whatever extra stories are in Sword and Shield. And doing raid battles. That's pretty much it. So that's going to be series all on its own. And I think I might upload this before my other project ends. I don't, I'm not going to spoil either which. But what what project that episode I'm talking about. But you guys will soon find out. So right now what I'm doing on the screen is. I'm going to go. I'm catching the slowpoke. I think that was pretty obvious enough. And previous before the slowpoke. I was capturing the slowpoke. I mean 
the zigzagoon, the Galarian version of it. Now, as you can see on the screen right now, I am struggling to catch a level 12. I'm so poke, and I, I, I don't understand why I'm struggling to catch a level 12 slow poke. But then again, I really can't hurt it because I'm a level 62. I mean, heck, I just beated the Elite Four. I mean, the champion battle. But unfortunately, actually, as a matter of fact, if you guys are this far into the video, five minutes into the video, drop down a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you when I see you. If this happens to be the last segment that you see. But yeah, now going back to Pokemon Direct 2020. So now they're, so now in, in Natural Sword and Shield, after they released the Galarian Slowpoke, they actually introduced one, I think it was like two extra raid battles or Pokemon that you catch with raid battles. And one of them is what you see on the screen, Flabapple, which holy crap, I, I, I was kind of scared going into this battle. You guys don't even know, if you had my reaction, I was like, Oh my god, it's a flab apple. How am I gonna catch this? <laughs> or actually even defeat it because I think it was a level 5. I think you saw on your screen. Or it's either a level 5 or a level 4. And the best thing I had on my squad was knock towel. So that is something. <sighs> You're gonna see throughout the battle how difficult this was. Now, I might spoil a little bit then and there because I just love talking about this battle because I didn't think I was gonna capture it. But yeah, Flabapple is one of the new Gigantamax Pokemon that you could catch in uh, the Galarian in Galar. I know I repeat myself a lot, but I have like so many thoughts going into my head. It's just insane. Like if it were to be in my brain, you'd probably need something to keep up with it. Because I'm saying something and then I'm thinking of like two steps ahead, which is weird. And I just combine what I thought in the future and now together and that's why I kind of sound confusing when I communicate with you guys so that's very interesting about me that's one cool thought about me or fact whatever that is I mean whatever but yeah so this is Flav Apple and the other one that just was recently released was it was the so for those who have actually kept up with my Shady Lock uh, it was the cold Pokemon that we encounter left of I can't even remember the cities or the place, but it was in the in the Galar mine. It is the only mine that you encounter at the beginning of the city at the beginning of the game, and I, I think it was called Roly Cola. There you go, Roly Cola's third final evolution. His third final evolution has a Gigantamax version of it. So right now it's as as of the the point of this video that I'm uploading it. It is live, and if you guys are some want to be helpful I mean not helpful <laughs> you see you see this hasn't been this is me at post recording but if you guys are so nice drop down your friend codes I want to do raid battles with you guys live well not live but live commentary commentate this because live streaming I might do it I, I don't know that's still a little fishy because right now my internet is not the best in the world and it just goes in and out which is pretty bad by the way not as bad as Goki Gamer by the way <laughs> <laughs> that is a completely different story. I could do collabs fine, but <laughs> when it comes to like live streaming, it might not be that the best liable. And on top of that, I really don't have a dedicated like PC or anything to actually do live streams. So that really hurts me in the end. That's why I've been kind of discouraged to do any live streams on Twitch. Now, if you guys would love some live streams, let me know. Give me your feedback down in the comment section below for sure. Because look at my past live streams I think I've had a, quite a few live streams in in the channel actually as a matter of fact you could check out my Pokemon let's go Pikachu uh, series on the channel all you have to do is um, go at the bottom of this video and you can see my logo and just click on it and it will be directed to my channel and once you get there click the playlist button it's pretty visible you'll be able to see it and once you click that you'll find all my series that I have on this channel live and ready for you guys to watch and let me know how you think about live streaming because for me when I live stream I use the Elgato I, I cannot use OBS on the equipment that I have right now because it will lag the stream and I don't want you guys to watch some laggy stream and I, if I don't like it most likely you guys won't even like it <laughs> oh man but yeah and also my commentary is a little bit out of whack because I'm hearing the delay of the game. Well, not the game, but the audio. 
like the commentary like a second like a millisecond like it's noticeable to me i don't know for other people that are at live streaming i i noticed the uh, the latency in the audio or in my commentary I'm more like it it's just it's just annoying that's why i actually try to avoid myself from doing live streams and just do recordings which just makes it much better for me which is great so as you can see right now Flavapple is on the screen my Gigantamax is gone and I'm afraid because I think that's the third Pokemon down and and if I lose one more I believe I think it's, that was my third Pokemon I lost but there you go you see it you're gonna see it right now I was scared as hell to go and catch this because I don't know what to do look Ooh, look right there and then I knew I was gonna catch it or wait there you go there you go I defeated it right here I believe and here not knowing I thought if you go and defeat a Pokemon in a raid battle it's a definite capture but dumb old me did not know that 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 doesn't mean that these raid battles don't guarantee absolute captured so when I threw this Pokemon I would be like your boy just got a full of apple now I, I'm telling you I'm spoiling this raid battle scene right here so I get the one shake I believe I get the second shake I get three shake no there you go I, I, it was just two shakes so there you go but ba bye bye flow apple he said literally f you bro he's like f you about and you're gone so this is actually my second Pokemon that I actually decided to capture and this was the second that was just released into the game in this point in time and that was Rolly Cola's final evolution. I forgot what it was called, as a matter of fact. I think it's gonna tell you. And I can't actually see it because I have like a face cam covering that part of this video. And it's annoying. And I really don't wanna stop this recording here or else I'm just gonna <laughs> I have to restart it again. So I wanna go one through over and hopefully it sounds great. So at this point in time, when I was actually recording this live, I was. I fought it once and I lost because I, I, I was so close to winning it down but five, four Pokemon died on the process and therefore it kicked me out of the raid battle. But then I saw some people were around this area so I decided you know what let's invite them and it took me that long to get them in the game but I knew once all the Pokemon I mean once all the people joined like real life in real life IRL joined this I was gonna capture Colossal or at least have an attempt at catching it now you're gonna see you're not gonna see the struggles because i decided not to put it in or else it would be a very long episode and i don't want you guys to be suffering through it but we're opening up this battle with his shield already up and that, that's one thing i hate about raid battles but now i could see why people why why um it's it's a way to market it because you're gonna need irl people and not these dumb npcs that you're gonna see it later on these NPCs are just dumb was well, partly a little bit dumb not all Pokemon all the NPCs are dumb but some, most of the time they are gonna be dumb and they're just not gonna attack and they're just gonna do defense curl or you're gonna get Wobble Fist that have counter it's, it's a bunch of it's just pain that you just need friends and I'm not saying I <sighs> I don't have friends it's just I don't I have friends that don't play Pokemon Sword and Shield as of right now I only have Goki Gamer and my boy would come through to be honest and I actually talked to him and I it's not 100% confirmed but I asked him if he was down to do Pokemon raid battles as a series or something because he does live streaming on Twitch so whatever you see on his Twitch is probably what I'm gonna have recorded every now and then I don't know how that's gonna go about the situation so that's gonna be intense enough. I mean, that's gonna be an interesting series in in of itself. So as you can see, a couple of minutes happen, and I'm still trying to capture this Colosso, and he's just taking forever to be captured because I, he's just being a stubborn old bee. Like, wh what can I say about it? And I feel like I've been talking forever. So actually, this episode, as of right now, where. 15 minutes about 15 minutes like 14 minutes and 45 seconds that I'm recording it to this and so far I caught I think it was a Gyarados, Sock, Maricatus, uh, Zigzagoon, 
I think I'm forgetting other Pokemon, and I think it was from Mercatus was to the Flavapple Galarian battle. I mean the Flavapple Gigantamax battle, and now into Colossal we're now. I'm probably missing one more to be honest. I mean I just don't. I have a short term memory. I can't remember everything, and this is pretty much brand new to to me. But actually, the one thing that kind of was strange to me is that they brought this um, legendary Pokemon. I forgot it. Eternatus? I forgot the Eternatus. I think it was his name. Because this guy is weak to the raid battle Pokemon. Because it's a rock and fire type, I think. Or a ground and fire type. I don't remember. Don't quote me on it. I think it's been a, it's been a minute since I actually played this. So. It, it, and, and it was strange because the legendary is actually poison and dragon. So all you would have to do is an earthquake and it'd be dead. But good thing that the... The Gigantamax Pokemon is just, the NPCs is just dumb that it won't attack it, <laughs> and and they will just attack other Pokemon that are very normal that do normal damage and not super effective damage. So that's a good thing that happened to me in this raid battle. But honestly, doing these raid battles, I love it. I enjoy it, and I wish I could do more with IRL people. So if you guys are YouTubers, PokeTubers watching this, and you're right here in two sixteen minutes. I want you guys to comment down below and tell me would you be down to do some collab raid battles. I'd be down to do it if you guys are down. Uh, this also goes, <laughs> this also ta uh, is implied towards Goku Gamer, which I hope he might watch this episode to this point. If he is, Goku Gamer, drop down a like and comment down below. I heard you do, I heard you do, and say, I heard you, Geo. In quotations, I heard you, Geo. Just say that in the comment section below, and I'll know. That you made it to this point in time. And if you did, Goki, you are a MVP on this channel, man. I enjoy making content with you. And this is actually it's just dedicated to him. It's like I'm professing my love to him. <laughs> that's, uh, 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 <laughs> that's completely something else. <laughs> okay. So before I jump into something, let me go talk about that colossal battle. That colossal battle was trash. I caught him, I defeated him, and I just couldn't capture it. It sucks. I think I just included that section of it, did I? I think I pretty much just included that portion of it. Because I had multiple other encounters with a colossal, and it did the same thing that this one just did in the past scene. It just decided to say, bye bye B, I'm not gonna be yours. At least not right now. And I think right after I ended that raid battle with that Colossal, I had another Colossal and it was a failed attempt. So I decided to, you know what, I'm not going to include it and let's move on to the next scene. And the next scene was actually running into this light part. And I knew I have never caught a light part in uh, in this game. So I said, uh, might as well include this raid battle with light part. So as you can see, this Pokemon is not going to be a really hard capture because it's not like a... A Gigantamax Pokemon that is like level tier, like needing level tier capturing rates, which is annoying, but whatever. So as as this is as this battle is going on, just know that I think I most likely caught it. I I believe so. This has been a while since I actually edited this portion, so that's as far as I know. But yeah, so now that I'm just done and capturing you guys up on what's happening with the channel and everything let me just go and talk about pokemon direct 2020 so pokemon direct 2020 what what are my thoughts and opinions about it you may ask i'm actually pretty excited but not too excited because i knew it i i knew it because nintendo well game freak and nintendo they're both technically working together i think they're the same thing i'm just a little dumb you see i'm a little dumb guys so but anyways, but the point what they were trying to do is they want to market Pokemon Sword and Shield to kids and they knew, like, hear me out. Now, this is a good marketing strategy that I'm, I'm just trying to put myself in Game Freak and Nintendo's shoes. They want to open it up to younger kids, like, that are born between the ranges of 2005, maybe even younger than that, 2010 and above. They want people to play this game. It wants kids, adults, and everything. Now... Here's the part that it gets good. People are complaining about, oh, oh my favorite Pokemon is not gonna get in there. Infernape is not gonna get in there. Garchomp is not gonna get in there. Talonflame is not gonna get in there. Not my starters. Bulbasaur didn't make it in there. Um, also, Squirtle didn't get in there. 
but but you know, hear me out now this is gonna be their marketing strategy they're gonna be like, okay you guys want more Pokemon let you know what let me let me create a DLC this is Nintendo saying this well pretty much it sounds like it it's like saying you know what you're gonna I'm gonna make you guys pay for it for what you guys want you're demanding and I'm gonna give it to you through a DLC so pay up $30 for this which is pretty rather cheap for two regions to be honest but the strategy is there and I'm gonna say it, it, they did a pretty good darn job with that <laughs> I'm, I'm even impressed but I knew it was gonna come either way people called in reddit Twitter wherever social media is that you hear about Pokemon Sword and Shield they called it they definitely called it and here it is. Here are your extra Pokemon. Here are more Galarian Pokemon. And actually one more Galarian raid battle that I forgot about was Galarian Lapras. And I forgot what else? I think Lapras and something else I forgot. But going back on the DLC, they did a fantastic job in marketing that. And I wouldn't be surprised after Pokemon Battle, I think it's Isle Battle Armor or whatever that is that you saw when I when we were talking about the Galarian, when we saw the Galarian Slowpoke, there are two regions that were going to be introduced. One in June, which is going to be the Armor Island, and then another one in Fall 2020. Who know the date is not, the month is not released yet, so. As far as we know, it's Fall 2020. So, I wouldn't be surprised in 2021 and 2022 is going to be introducing more islands with Pokemon from the Sinnoh region, the Hoenn region, and so on so on because there is so much power and potential they can do with that and people are willing to pay for it trust me i'm even willing, I'm willing to pay for it and i'm a person that's very greedy when it comes to money and managing and everything so people are gonna buy this i will almost a hundred percent guarantee it majority of people that say actually uh, i guarantee almost not 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 a hundred percent but around there that People that said beforehand that they're not going to get Sword and Shield, they're going to get it. Trust me, they are. Especially when they hear that their Pokemon are getting introduced to the game. I could already see multiple comment sections that, or actually like Instagrammers that post content on Pokemon Sword and Shield are going to be like, Oh my god, my favorite Pokemon is there. You know what? Screw what I said a couple of months ago about not getting Sword and Shield. I'm going to go and get it. That It's going to be like that. It's just That's just going to be the thing. That, that's, that's just going to happen and face it. These... These companies know how to market to you guys and they're gonna do it whether they're gonna find a way to get your money that's what they want to do and going back to the one idea that I said at the beginning or earlier when I encountered the colossal scene right here um, I'm talked about the bars now the reason why they included the bars and this is just a theory and it's probably not even true because these NPCs tend to be stupid and they won't break the bars for you and they might just use moves like follow me or something else and it won't break the, their barriers and de that decreases their special defense and regular defense so that's why they built in that raid battle aspect to get people to consume nintendo switch online now that's a good marketing strategy i feel like that's why they're adding bars maybe it's just me and just because the higher the the level of the raid Pokemon you're encountering, which go from level one to level five, that increases their their guard ability. Now I don't know how true that is because if you see the Nine Tails here has five bars and it's not like a a Gigantamax version of the Pokemon. So that that's just my theory. I feel like that that's how they're marketing their part of. Of Nintendo Switch Online because there is a lot of Pokemon Switch games out there, but they're not as competitively or like marketable towards Switch Online that I see, anyways. I mean, I'm not that as uh, that uh, into like gaming like other Pokemon like indie games and everything. Like, I'm not into it yet, but I would get into it for you guys because hey, there's always something to learn each day and shit. I mean, shit. I hope, I hope I didn't, I, I, that wasn't clear on the on the street. I mean, on the recording, because if not, I might have to cut that out. But eh, screw it. I don't. It, it was just one bad word, and stupid is not considered a bad word. But the other one I said was probably could be considered a bad word. But oh well, it's just one word. It's not like I keep on saying, uh, shiz. Yeah, shiz. That's not a bad word. That's just something else. I mean, 
it is the same thing, but just kind of like sugarcoated it. And I think I just said that word once or twice. But we defeated the Nine Tails and went back to the screen. We actually caught the Nine Tails in this capture. I might as well spoil it because this is these Pokemon are not hard to catch in raid battles. So honestly, you just throw a Pokemon. Even a Pokemon would be suffice. Will suffice enough. But the other Pokemon that are actually Gigantamax versions, they're not guaranteed. At least the way that I've seen them. And the way if you guys are kept up with my Shady Lock series, you'll see it as well. There you go. We caught nine tails and we're gonna move on to the last half of this section soon. Well actually not the last section. I'm I just included this TM because it's TM95. Because I was thinking of maybe creating I know that there's already YouTube videos out there about capturing I mean getting all the TMs in the Galarian region, but I might as well create my own version of it. Hopefully I could do a better job at it, to be honest. Uh, I'ma try. I'ma try guys. I'ma try for you. I'ma try to create a good uh, post recording session not like this one and the next one that I'm gonna be creating a little bit This is like the first time for your boy and let me know if you guys are making it this far into the recording uh, Or this episode let me know down in this comment section below how I'm doing with it because I really want to know uh, I really want to know how I can improve as a Poketuber and in, and in general with commentary because at some point, I visualize myself in the future talking to an audience of 100 people, 200 people, 300, or even a thousand. I want to be like a motivational speaker. That's what that's my goal with this, like with commentary and everything. I want to be a motivational speaker, and that's what I want to do with my life. And I feel like YouTube is one step there. Now, this is doing it virtually, and I could probably reach thousands of other people from multiple countries and everything. That's that's how I envision my channel. Now I know I'm jumping into multiple topics, but hey, there's commentary there. Hey, free commentary for all y'all, and you probably could hear this through. Or actually, this is why this was how I was inspired to create the Geoki podcast, which is technically official now because I uploaded only one episode so far. <laughs> But yeah, let's go. Going back onto this on the screen right now, what you're seeing is the Gigantamax raid battle with your boy uh machamp now machamp was just a pain on its own i i don't let me just tell you there's a, uh, there's a lot of things that happen with this raid battle let me just tell you i've been recording at this point in time i think it was like one hour and 48 minutes or even earlier like one hour just one hour in or one hour and 20 but it doesn't matter how long i was recording i was just recording for a very long long time and fighting this a uh, specific battle I've been fighting this Machamp for 45 minutes straight. I think I, 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 I'm being serious when I say that. I was fighting this Machamp for 45 minutes because I first tried it with Noctowl. Noctowl, I didn't include it in this clip or in this episode. I am not including it because there was a bunch of episodes. I mean, a bunch of sections of me fighting this Machamp multiple times. And I think this is my very last time, I believe. And this was my last shot. I said, you know what? I'm gonna bring Mina back from the from back from the grave and I rare candy them up from all the raid battles I've been doing in this session and I I said frick it let's do the raid battle let's hope I, I I think Mina was powerful enough to give me some revenge some power but nope no no it, that that wasn't the case yeah apparently she decided to say you know what I'm not that strong <laughs> But I think it's just the raid battles itself. They're just said to be that difficult to, just so you can be over leveled like a hundred and just destroy them, utterly easy. But oh well. So this is the very last scene for this, I believe. Uh, let's see where am I in the recording? Uh, mm, I really can't tell. So yeah, I'm actually going towards the end of this episode. Yeah, I'm actually going towards the end of the episode. We're almost there. So, um, I think I'm gonna wrap it up in a in a little bit once I hit that 31 minute mark, and that should be pretty much it. So this raid battle is gonna soon come to an end, and you guys are gonna know why. <laughs> if you guys are keeping up of the amount of Pokemon I lost, I think I lost three on this way. Am I? But yeah, to wrap the to wrap up this battle. Um. The lowest I ever got to this Machan going down was probably the low reds. So, 
I, I just can't capture this much M. I, I need like Goki Gamer. I think if I had Goki Gamer, I would be able to destroy this easily. Even even with Goki Gamer. But I really want to have a range of audience. So if you guys made it to this 30 minute mark of this recording, drop down a like. Consider subscribing and hit that notification bell to be updated to all Pokemon Sword and Shield related content. And also, if you guys are down to do collabs for raid battles, also comment down below that you are down. Drop down your friend code and I will add you and probably set up a schedule for us to go and do some raid battles for a little while. So with that being said, I think this is the very last round that I have with this Machamp. And I'm going to close out the episode. Now, unfortunately, I did not cover everything on the on the direct that on my thoughts on the Pokemon Direct 2020. But to sum it up, I'm, I'm happy with what's happening. Especially with Galarian versions of the legendaries like the Legendary Trio, the Regigigas Trio, and Regigigas itself. And other legendaries that are soon to come to the Galar region. Now, that's just amazing. I'm expecting a lot more Galarian Pokemon in those DLCs. And... To answer your question, if it was running through your mind, yes, I am going to do a, a Let's Play on it. Maybe not a Shayla Lock, but just a Let's Play. Just to screw out. It's, it'll probably be an after game episode. So, so yeah. Um, so, right now, I probably just cut the clip. And it's just me talking right now. And I'll probably play some some music going on. And <laughs> I, didn't, I, I completely forgot that this episode ended a little bit early. But that's post-recording for you guys. So... Uh, I don't know. I don't know where I was in this point of my time of the recording. But I'd probably just cut it to this part. And all that really, ha all, all that I wanted to say about the Pokemon Direct 2020, I might go into further detail in the next live recording that I do, whether it be two days from now, three days from now, this upload. Whenever I decide to record again, I'm actually gonna go talk about more about Pokemon Direct 2020. And all I want to say is, I I want to see more Galarian Pokemon. Now I saw Galarian of Venusaur. Their Gigantamax versions and Blastoise, along with the trio, the original starters of the Gala region, those are getting their Gigantamax versions. What other ones? I talked about the Regigigas forms, the trio, the bird trio forms from Kano, Mini Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. There's more legendaries being added, and maybe they might have some Galarian version of themselves. And there's Galarian Slowpoke, Slowbro. And that's pretty much it that I remember from the Pokemon Direct 2020. So with that being said, I don't want to make this episode longer than it needs to be. Drop a comment down below if you guys are still down to do a collab with me. And subscribe, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell to be notified of all Pokemon Sword and Shield related content. I probably repeated myself three other times, but I cannot say it enough. Alright, I'll see you on the next episode guys. Peace.